Transport Minister Figi Lembalula yesterday announced that the International Civil Aviation Organization has rated South Africa with a safety index of a positive one, and this being the highest positive rating any state can achieve. Now, Mbalula says that the last time South Africa was audited on safety was in 2017 and that the state achieved a safety compliance rating of 87.39%, which way surpasses the global average of just over 69%. So for more on this and other issues pertaining to the state of aviation in the country, we're now joined by the Deputy Minister of Transport, uh, Ms. Sindisiwe uh, Chikunga. Thanks so much for coming through. Welcome to Morning Live and Happy birthday, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, Sakina, and, and thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. Yes, 9-11, it's my birthday. <laughs> and of course, you know, uh, the, the, the crew did sing for the Deputy yes. Minister. I'll just put it out there. So you just didn't see it on air, but we have wished the Deputy Minister a happy birthday. So let's talk about um, this uh, award, and uh, uh, rather the assessment. And it's good news for South Africa, and we've always known that you know, in the aviation space, South Africa has always had a wonderful track record, and we seem to continue there. We, we're doing exceptionally good, uh, Sakena. We've been audited not only by South Africa. Surely our entities are audited by our Auditor General, and we're receiving clean audits. But also we get audited by the ICAO, which is International Civil Aviation Organization, We've been audited by U.S., which is a federal aviation administration, and all of them have given us a clean bill of health. And, and actually, we rate high in the world. Uh, you will know that you, in aviation, you've got aviation safety. So when you get into an aircraft, you must know that I will arrive alive to my destination, and that talks to the aviation safety. But also there's aviation security, which talks to the criminality that must be prevented. And all those gets audited by different uh, 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 entities and different bodies. We've been audited by US for aviation safety. We're given category one, which says we are on par with US. Our airport aircrafts can, and airline can fly freely to US. And what we have seen immediately after receiving the news for, in, I mean, lately is the number of traffic from U.S. to South Africa is on the increase, which therefore talks to a tourism that talks to people that come to South Africa with the aim of assessing whether they can invest in South Africa. So it talks to economic issues as well. So that is a good story. But we've also been audited by the same U.S., which is Transport uh, Aviation Administration uh, uh, on, on, on cargo security. And, and, and that also means that and they've actually been given as a permanent recognition. What would actually normally happen is that they will say on intervals, two, year, uh, two years will be auditing you. But they've said, no, South Africa, you are at the same level with us. We're giving you permanent recognition. It means our airlines can now fly cargo, transport cargo from South Africa to, e, to US without any hindrance. But this also have received with EU states. And therefore, South Africa can, can fly without any auditor having to come to South Africa to audit our air cargo at the cost of South Africa as it is happening in other states. So yes, we're doing exceptionally good in that regard. And, and like you have said, in 2011, we were audited for security, I mean, aviation security. We received 81.3. In terms of ICAO, its target is to have all states receiving 80% by 2023, which is next year. We received 81.3 in 2011. We will be audited for aviation, I mean, we were audited again this year in August for aviation security. And, and, and we expecting good results because if there were anything, there were any significant uh, security concerns, uh, they would have been published within 30 days. But we now have received, of course, our interim report, and it says we are in the clean bill of life of, of, of health, and we will then be corresponding to that, and we'll get the final report in December. So we think exceptionally good in the aviation sector uh, in terms of aviation security and aviation safety, particularly when you talk about your scheduled or commercial aircrafts and airlines. We're doing exceptionally good, and that is why we have a zero air crash a, a, a rating in South Africa. And <clears throat> that is obviously fantastic. Uh, I think it's about 
uh, just over three decades of no commercial um, fatalities yes. in South Africa in the aviation space. But, but we have seen a few light aircraft crashes uh, with fatalities. So, you know, in that regard, w what is government doing uh, just to see what exactly the problems are, why these crashes are occurring and how to curb that? And that is what we refer to as general aviation, which actually is recognized by the state itself. And, and we're doing something about it. Uh, Asaka put a, a strategy on dealing with that. And we are beginning to see the results because even if we may have seen increase on the crashes themselves, but on the fatalities, we've registered a 26% decrease which I think it's important. But as the department, we have said to, 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 to SACA and all other state-owned companies in the sector, in the private sector, because in the main, many of them are owned by private people. We're saying we're going to be very strict on these matters and we'll want to see this being decreasing because we can't be losing people in the aviation sector. Whether it is in the general aviation, we can't be losing people. But we are happy that at least we are seeing a decrease in the fatalities. And we want to see 50% decrease in, in, in accidents in the aviation, general aviation sector by 2024. And we're working towards that. And we're monitoring that. But on international space, we're doing exceptionally well. Maybe just to yeah. rush to tell you that we, we, we led a delegation, as the minister indicated yesterday, to ICAO Triennial Assembly in October this year. We went there with South Africa ready to contest for re-election into the ICAO Council. ICAO has 193 member states. South Africa is one of those. And then it has got a, an, a, an, a council which consists of 36 members. And those members are elected in terms of three parts, categories. Part one will be for countries that are big in aviation, but also they manufacture aircrafts. Part two will be countries that are big in aviation, but may not necessarily be manufacturing aircraft. South Africa is there. And then part three will be countries that represent regions. For instance, from SATEC region, Zimbabwe was elected this time around to represent the SATEC region and other countries as well like that. That is where we are. We went there to campaign for re-election because you don't take the things for granted. But arriving there, seated at the plenary, here is the president of the assembly being elected. And the, a lady from, from, from Czech Republic says, on behalf of the EU states, I hereby nominate the name of Popi Koza to, be, to preside over this assembly. Aikayo is, 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 is 78 years old, and it has had uh, 40 trinal assemblies. 40 of them were presided over by men. For the first time, a woman was presiding over the, the, this assembly, this highest decision body in the aviation sector in the world. And a woman from South Africa was there representing not only women in South Africa, not only in Africa, but in the world to say aviation is for once recognizing that women are capable, they are capacitated, they can do these things. But that woman was from South Africa, from the, the rural part of South Africa, Dandi, Smongile. That's where she comes from and she's when when they spoke about her you you said but are they talking about the poppy that comes from <laughs> south africa and 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 the reasons why they think she should actually preside and she presided and i can tell you um uh, she had to deal with unprecedented issues for once in the aikayo assembly under normal circumstances, you will have countries contesting. For instance, part one, you'll vote for part one and vote for part two. Normally, you'll find that there is no one who attempts to, to contest part one. So it's 11 countries contesting for 11 uh, positions. The only difference will be on who gets more votes and who gets the, the least votes. But this time around, but all of them, even if they're 11, they still have to meet the threshold. That mm -hmm. is 50 plus one. One country this time around did not make it, did not meet the threshold. There is nothing in the statutes that says under the circumstances, what do you do? So you had, and, and she, she was there presiding. And the country that could not get the vote, a big country, remember, big in aviation manufacturing, meeting everything, bigger, bigger than others that are in part one, and, and some others that are in part one. And, and then a decision had to be taken. 
And believe you me, that was one matter that could have collapsed the assembly. But she sat there and, 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 and was able to give people the opportunity to speak. But after that, she said, this is what is going to happen. And, 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 I and can see you, you felt still like... beaming with pride at that. So and, <laughs> it and you led that delegation and it yes. was obviously a very proud moment and we, for we, South we Africa. And we re-elected South Africa to serve again. And maybe the, the, the very representative of South Africa lately, the council, I um, mean, also elected him to be the first vice president of, 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 of the ICAO Council. So South Africa is flying high in the aviation sector. And I think it's something that really is a country we should be celebrating and be happy about. Because you're not only, when you talk aviation, you're not talking about it at a national level. Yes, you're going to have your domestic airlines, but you're talking about it at an international level. That is where you compete. And believe you me, we're not competing with the, you know, we're competing with the best in the world. It's so, U.S. that says you are on par with us. Let me ask this, Deputy Minister, and, you know, as you tell that story with so much passion and pride, um, it, it, it really does translate, because I'm sitting here and I'm feeling proud uh, yes. about that particular moment and that it happened. But how do we maintain that? How do we ensure that we do not let these standards slip? What sort of measures do we have in place to make sure that we don't lose skills and that there is continuous skills transfer happening so that we maintain these levels? I, I think what the question that I asking Sakina is important, the succession plan that we have in the aviation sector, where you can't just leap and wake up and say, Cindy Chikunga, now that you've been the Deputy Minister of Transport, go and represent South Africa as, as, as a permanent representative in ICAO. Because I'm not, I'm not a, a, an aviator. I'm not a specialist. There, they speak technical issues. They speak about the engine. They speak about this and that, things that I can talk about, despite the fact that I am the deputy minister. So you can't say simply because deputy minister, Cindy Chikong has been the deputy minister, then you wake up and say she must represent South Africa in Aikayo because she's not going to add any value. So we go for the best. You know, the representative of South Africa there, Mr. Mabasu, he didn't only assist us to do the past, but also the continent. The working papers that were submitted by AFCAC, they all went through him because he looks for the detail. He's a lawyer, but an aviation lawyer. So he understands the sector very well and he's been there. And that's what we also, the minister has done in appointing people in the aviation state-owned companies Miss Bobby Koza had actually been there before she got appointed as, as the DCA. Uh, 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 the people that are there. So it, to, to ensure that these things happen, we've got to ensure that we continue to appoint capable, capacitated people and we can't compromise. Not in that area. Mm. You just cannot. If so that would take uh, care of things at an administrative level. Yes. But what, at, uh, what happens on the shop floor in terms of the skills we're talking about safety and the fact that the countries that are in the top tier feel safe and they are you know happy with what south africa has to offer should an aircraft land here should something need to happen maintenance wise they are happy that south africa will do the right thing is there a plan what are we doing in that um, uh, uh, scene uh, to make sure that practically there is a skills transfer because I I'm just worried about that given what's happening in other sectors yeah. and this is highly specialized so th th we, we have to be concerned about succession planning in that regard as well. And, and, and the training as well uh, Sakina. We, we first, let, let me talk about our space, we're responsible for the 6% of the world space in South Africa. So the air crashes that we're talking about do not happen because we have the best air traffic controllers that we train here in South Africa with an academy that is performing at a world level. And, and we continue to produce the world, you know, qualified air traffic con controllers, the best in the world. So we have that. But also we're saying our, our pilots, for instance, because between the air traffic controller and the pilot, somebody must know what is happening. We are also saying let's produce the best. And, 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 and we've not been doing that exceptionally good in terms of transforming. But we're looking at other ways of doing that. For instance, just last year we received five pilots 
that we sent as a country to France to be trained. And they came back with the highest qualification in, in, in the area of being an, an, a, a, a pilot, which normally they would not have received in the country with the academies that we have. And, and they came back ready to get into the biggest mm. uh, uh, aircraft and fly to Heathrow and so on and so forth. And these things, and we think we need to do this. It's expensive, but worth it. So the issue of training with the technical people that we're training in our academies, for instance, you have got to actually receive 100 percent for practicals, not 99 percent, because we can't afford a 1 percent in the aviation sector That's of what not causes knowing. Crashes. Yes, that, because that one percent can actually cause. So when you go for practicals there, you have to get 100% and that is all. And this is actually happening here in South Africa. And that accounts for the work and what we're talking about here today, that our, our training is strict, it's world-class, it gets audited. And, 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 and I always tell people that Amongst the people that have been at the, at the ICAO, the former president from Nigeria is a product of South Africa's academy. He is a qualified air traffic controller, trained here in South Africa, was the former president of the, of the ICAO Council. That's, that's the level at which we're training our people. So yes, the quality of our training, but also continuing to identify other countries that can help us, that will help us. The, policy in aviation that the minister spoke about yesterday that has got to be there and be very clear on what we are doing in the aviation that does not depend on who is in the department of transport it, it it shouldn't have personalities and faces it should be something that whether it is cindy or sakina it has got to be implemented and the quality maintained at that level mm. because we cannot compromise not in the aviation now, and I know, you know, this is where things, uh, you know, the lines get blurred and everything. So we're talking aviation. So, and I know that the Department of Public Enterprises has to deal with part of what goes on here. But as the Department of Transport, uh, looking at what's happening in terms of just uh, the sheer number of seats available for passengers, is this something that the Department of Transport is currently seized with? Because the prices are exorbitant, and that's if you can find a seat at this point. In fact, I think there's some improvement now. Uh, uh, AXA CEO was actually telling us that they've actually had discussions with uh, airline CEOs. Because post-COVID, you know, COVID killed aviation, not only in South Africa, everywhere. Because if there are no people traveling because of whatever that was said by countries and decisions that were taken, then you don't have tariffs and, and state-owned companies, airlines don't get money. And, and when then they came back, they were very, CEOs were very careful to say which routes are we going to, to, to service. And it could only be those routes that are bringing money to the airline so that the airline can recover. Now that we're seeing more traffic, more people traveling, uh, uh, more airlines are, are, are beginning to identify uh, more routes and more slots. They're taking more slots, which I think is important. I know for sure that they will now be adding slots to Deben between O'R Tambo and Deben and even uh, between O'R Tambo and Cape Town. Because I, I can agree with you, getting a, a seat in the airline is, is, is a nightmare. Mm. I'm, I'm talking about the domestic one. You have got to actually book two weeks before you travel. And sometimes it doesn't happen. You have got to travel today. At some stage, you had, have had to talk to some CEOs to say, please try, find me a seat. Because you can't just get a seat. And that is a problem. However, the airlines are coming on board now. With more demand and with more people traveling, we're hoping that that is going to actually have impact again on the fares. And, and I think they're going to go down. But with the demand being so high, few seats, few airlines, surely the, the, the fares had to go up. In fact, they will say, I don't know, but they then had, the, the, the fares were very high. But I believe that after, now that we are seeing more slots being taken, more airlines introducing aircrafts and routes and so on, we believe that we're going to see fares going down. Well, we hope so from your lips to the airline um, operator's ears yes. because the prices have been crazy of late. Extremely crazy. I agree.
So, uh, Deputy Minister, thank you so much. And um, so good to hear a good news story. And uh, thanks for coming to tell us that story on your birthday, as it were. And that was the Deputy Minister of Transport, uh, Cindy Siwe Chikunga, and uh, talking to us uh, about uh, South Africa and, of course, our aviation industry, um, uh, the uh, Civil Aviation in Organization internationally has rated South Africa uh, with the safety index uh, that is of the highest positive rating in the world and we have achieved that so something to celebrate in South Africa.